I'm Alice Leckhart, a uh, Board of Directors member here at Stewart Heritage Museum, 1901 building, one of the oldest commercial ones in all of Stewart. And we're situated in the heart of historical downtown Stewart. Along the other way, across the railroad tracks, that's Potsdam, one of the earliest neighborhood communities in the area. You have Frazier neighborhood, just to its left. You have the Roosevelt Bridge, it's crossing the St. Lucie River. So a wonderful place to start our adventure as we explore the five selfish statues which mark the historical trail. on St. Lucie Avenue, right along Osceola and Seminole Street. We're in the historic heart of Stewart. A lot of businesses and homes have been in this area. You go down Osceola, there are homes and businesses. But one of the most famous is right here on the corner, known as the Stewart Boathouse. But it wasn't always a boathouse, it wasn't always a restaurant. It actually was part of the St. Lucie Hotel, which was built back this way. And if you go back even farther, where the City Hall is right now, that was property owned by the former President of the United States, Grover Cleveland. He had been here so many times, loved the area, especially because of the fishing at the turn of the century. He bought that property right over there where City Hall is today. He was going to have his own winter home right there. Unfortunately, he died in 1908, so it never got built. So with this area all the way to the river, the dock and what river walk today has always been very friendly and open to people to come and gather. There's bands that perform on Sunday here, and the businesses have always been in this location. When you go down towards Osceola, one of the most famous businesses right on the corner was that of the Stewart Bank. And it opened in 1922 when that particular building was opened. And that was one of the places that was robbed by the notorious Ashley Gang in February of 1922. So it's, the history here is always tremendous, and there's always something we can point out to you. Here we are at our next sailfish statue. We're at the intersection of Flagler Avenue and St. Lucie, right here by the train tracks, the crossing. Same train tracks that have been there since the 1890s. Oh my God. But also we had a train station right here in this location. This train station was built in 1913. Not the first one, we had one smaller that was farther down Flagler. But then as the city is growing, it needed a bigger train station. So everything started to expand right in this area. This became the new hub for Stewart, especially in the 1920s. Prior to that, we had this building right across the way, the green two-story building. You actually go on the St. Lucie side and you can see the date engraved in it, 1913 that this was built. Now a lot of different businesses have been in there over the years. We've had the Stewart Drug Store. We've had the US, US Post Office in there. We have had insurance companies all types of businesses. Right now it's a law office. So it's repurposed and still standing, which we are very happy of. When you go farther down, notice we have the great uh, Lyric Theater, built in 1926, but not the first theater. We actually had two other ones prior to this one. One along Osceola in 1914, then one in 1917, built here, a bigger one. And then when we needed to expand even more by the 20s for a theater, this one held a thousand in 1926. Of course, you're sitting on benches at the time, but it still held a lot more people. And that one was built in and has been serving the community ever since. That is just fabulous news to keep a historical area going. When you look at the other corner, the one story where it says, most beautiful city, Stewart in 2008, that used to be the Stewart department store, family owned and operated. And after they closed in the 80s, then the city of Stewart purchased it and they use it as their annex for city business. So again, we have everything that the people need, whether it's shopping, restaurants, all here in the hub of historic downtown Stewart. We've now crossed over the railroad track. We're on the other side, and this is the Potsdam neighborhood, one of the oldest ones in the area. This town was originally called Potsdam until they changed it to Stewart, only because the train engineers couldn't really say Potsdam correctly, but they kept the neighborhood, the name, the same. So in this neighborhood, we're at Akron and Third Street. A lot of different things have gone over in this community over the years. A lot of businesses and a lot of homes. One of the most important one 
was the building of Woodman Hall by the Woodman Men's Federation. And they built this so that they would have a meeting hall, not just for them, but for other people. The women's club and other civic organizations could meet upstairs, you know, schedule a time, and that's when their meetings would be. The downstairs was then rented out. It was first rented out as a, uh, a feed store, but that lasted only a couple of years. And then the uh, Bell South telephone system needed an area for its operators. We were getting phones then. <laughs> this is 1920s. And so the bottom area was used then for the phone operator. And that stayed until 1959. We finally got rotary phones by that time. And Southern Bell built another uh, front office right next door across. So over the years, this building has served other purposes besides just phone. It was a church for the Presbyterian congregation. It has been an antique store. It was a school for children. And right now it's an insurance company. You go to the other side and we've got the First Baptist Church. Also dates back to the 1910s and 1920s. Now the actual church that's standing today was built in the 1960s. So they did build another church, but it's in the same location. So a lot of history up and down. And one that we're gonna show in a few moments in our next stop will be the original church, community church. It was right over there along the railroad tracks. And what they did when they built that in 1895 they wanted a church so that anybody on the train coming by would see that church and know, hey, this has got to be a civilized area. They've got their own church, <laughs> which we did and we shared with many different denominations. And then eventually, by 1930, the St. Mary's Episcopal Church congregation purchased it, moved it up here to Third Street and situated it farther down. That building still exists today. Not a St. Mary's, but it has been used for many other purposes. That is since 1895 one of our oldest buildings here. Right down Third Street from our other sailfish, by Woodman Hall, here is the church, the one I talked about, 1895 that this was built, right along the railroad track so everybody could see it. And then by 1930, it was moved to this location on Third Street. Look at the window styles when uh, St. Mary's Church revamped it. There's your arches, so distinctive. Even going inside, you see where uh, the pews could have been and where the uh, chambers for the changing into the robes where the choir was done. Just fascinating. And yet over the years, it still even had different businesses. One of the most recent, it was the Martin County Probation Office, believe it or not. Here we are at our next sailfish statue. The history in this area is tremendous. We're right along Joan Jefferson Way, which used to be called Second Street. They named everything by letters and numbers back then, but had been renamed in honor of our commissioner, Joan Jefferson. But a lot of history in this area. You go down this area, you have the famous Sailfish Fountain and the railroad tracks, and then the train station. And you go up the other way westward, and you're at US 1. In this area over here, a lot of different things, mostly the church, the Methodist church. It had been part of the uh, original, original community church along the railroad tracks, and then they built in 1907 a big brick house that would be their church forever, they thought. Unfortunately, in January 1916, there was a fire, and a lot of buildings and places were destroyed, including this brick church. People just couldn't understand why, but it did happen. It was just the fire had gotten out of hand in someone's apartment. But you go just to the next street, Albany, and with that fine Victorian house owned by the Thomas family, that was untouched. Never had any damage from the fire. Same thing with across the street where Cynthia Haney's home was located. There's a hotel there now, but that was untouched by the fire. So it is kind of strange how some areas were affected. But we have the fine Victorian home still in operation, not by the Thomas family, but as a uh, business. And then you go right across it. They built in the 1920s, an uh, apartment building, two-story, that was known as Shadow Lawn, and that's still an apartment building. Uh, unfortunately, Cynthia Haney's home after her death was torn down, uh, and there's a hotel there. But you take Albany, go a little bit farther down, you're close to the first street, and that's where the Christian Endeavor Hall was. And that was one of the first meeting halls back in the turn of the century, 1900, for the people of Stewart. If they had a program or services they wanted, that's where they met. Unfortunately, that building was destroyed in the 1933 hurricane. So we've lost some things through fire, some things through uh, natural disasters. 
but we've still got a lot of our history here. The building on the opposite side is a new item and it will be apartment buildings to help those who want to live in the downtown section have affordable apartments. So we have the old and the new blended in one area right along Joan Jefferson Way. Here we are at Palm Beach Road and East Ocean. And on this corner is something very significant. Our sailfish statue here represents about the first hospital that Stewart had. They didn't have this until 1926. Sounds kind of unusual, but it was always figured that most of the people were well enough. They didn't need a hospital. We didn't hardly have doctors at that time during the 1910s and 1920s. But by into the mid and late 20s, we did had a little bit more population, and it was felt we needed something at least for emergencies. So this hospital, which is across the pond, the corner house, was already established. It was a building, it was a home, and it was donated to the city and county to set it up as an emergency and birthing hospital. So mothers could have their babies here, and if there was an emergency, which happened a lot, then they could always go here and doctors would be on call. To give you an idea how the doctors were so on call, just down the street on Fifth Avenue is where Dr. Parker even had his residence. So he was really on call. They needed something, out he came from his house right there to the hospital. Now, what we're looking across here is the pond. The pond was originally known as Janet Pond, and it was named for the owner's wife, who was a Kruger, one of the early pioneers here. But because of the hospital being here, the name eventually becomes known as Hospital Lake, and then eventually Hospital Pond. And that's what it is still today, with residents on one side who have a great view of this pond. And it's just nestled back here right off of East Ocean. We hope you've enjoyed this tour of the five historic sailfish statues scattered throughout historic downtown Stewart. Make sure you visit each and every one. It's a nice day trip. But also make sure you go by the Stewart Heritage Museum. If you want more information, you can go to its website, Stewart Heritage Museum, or just stop by. It's open every day, Monday through Sunday from 10 to 3. Thank you.